What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Jay Renee, with Prison Ride Radio. I hope that you're doing well. Um, this evening, we got a brother that's been here before, Timothy Brockerton. He's out in Maryland, Maryland at JCI, okay? Um, we already talked about the things that's going on there, but we're going to get a little deeper in what's going on with bro so we can give him some support, all right? So y'all make sure y'all tap in. All right, bro, thanks for pulling up on us. Right on. What's happening, Jay Renee? You know what I mean? We try and do the right thing out here amongst the wrong. Um, You've been here before, but this might be the first recording that some people have heard with you in it. So tell the people a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Well, as you know, she said, my name is Kennedy Brock. And a lot of my better kids and family call me Pac. Um, I'm from East Baltimore. You up now, Lafayette Project. You know, um, I'm a real stable guy. Right now, you know, I'm in a transition of my life. Been locked up for going on 20 years now. But, you know, I developed a lot of new things about myself that I didn't even know was there. Which means basically I'm a better person than I was when I first came in here. For sure, but you know, um, you're there under, you know, a wrongful conviction. You know what I mean? And a lot has come out since then and you're definitely pushing to make sure that people know and you know, we wanna make sure that we get you some support. So, uh, you know, tell people what's going on and you know, the support that you need. Well the latest is when I came in here, I realized that the only thing that I could finish indictment numbers as I uh, was talking previously to you about it. I got acquitted on my charge, 307. Uh, and uh, since then, I didn't find out until 2021 when I was brought back from being uh, for medical parole. I was in discharge, and uh, they brought me back because I didn't have a home plan. But since I've been back here, it's been hell trying to get back out on medical parole, which I haven't violated, which I still need, which... You know, I didn't even went as far as uh, had assistance with the uh, constituents, the board of constituents, and was written back that I no longer had my bone disease, which is ludicrous, and that it's not being monitored at all. And I got paperwork that basically says, you know, I have a bone disease in my right hip. It's not being treated, it's not being looked over, you know what I mean? And it can come back, and it killed me once already in 2017, so I'm kind of worried about that. It's pushing real hard right now to work on the present. And the present is that I found out that they hold me under my rap buddy's convictions, you know, and that my convictions are no longer even in the system. And um, I'm putting together a petition as I speak called uh, uh, a, a petition of inquiry, a habeas corpus of inquiry. And I'm uh, sending all the paperwork I got to the Baltimore Circuit Court so I can get a judge to look over this. And I pray, you know, that uh, they do the right thing when they see it. Uh, yeah, it is, it's you know, undeniable. I've looked over your paperwork and before, you know, what I mean, we figured out this discovery, we already know that you wasn't supposed to be there. You know what I'm saying? So right. this new discovery is definitely a highlight on this side of things. But unfortunately, we know the system and at times we got to push them to do what they're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? So. That's where we, the community, come in. You know, we got to step in and show our voice and show the support to let them know that they just can't do whatever they want to people, you know what I mean, without somebody paying attention. So I want to get into what we, the people, can do for you. Like, who do we need to reach out to in order to make sure that they know what's going on with you? Like, how can we support you? Well, the greatest support will come with uh, the wrong probation because... They the ones that has the information with regard to me being uh, brought back uh, for not uh, violating medical parole. They was the ones that uh, basically told me that I had to get my family to reapply and it shouldn't be an issue with me being released, saying as though I need proper care, saying right. as though that I got an insufferable, insufferable pain, like the bones just never stop and they can't properly medicate. So being that they not medicate, they know watching it, medical medical parole should be very aware of it and aware that people know that you know, I mean, they're trying to withhold the uh, the, 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 uh, the transcript from that hearing mm-hmm. and, that, and that's, that's the main ingredient because without the transcript nobody can hold them to what they said about me 
we had applied for medical parole and being released back though I didn't break the law and I didn't do nothing wrong. All right, for sure. So who? That's one of the biggest help. I'm sorry. I said that's one of the biggest help. In regards to this petition that I'm filing in the circuit court, um, I got the best thing people can do. You know what I mean? Is just make the courts aware, you know, that I've been acquitted of all my charges, and that everybody know that, and that is on my docket entry that can easily be looked up by anybody. Anybody can look up my docket entries online. Yeah, for um, sure. They definitely I think out the there. Most they need, I, think, I think the most they would need is my case number. And I guess you can easily say that out loud. I can easily run them numbers down at any time, or you can on my behalf. For sure, bro. But let us know, like, uh, who should the people reach out to on your behalf besides this petition? Who can they, who should they reach out to that can, you know, bring some insight into your, and light into your case? Who can I reach out to? Um, as I say, I write a letter. The letters that I've written are been to parole and probation, the commissioner of uh, parole and probation, and uh, the clerk of the court, the clerk of the court, 101 11 Lombard Street, that's in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, they the two that I've been writing the most, and I uh, haven't really got much feedback. Uh, I believe commitment. I don't, but I don't have it. I don't have an address for commitment. I thought commitment also was the courthouse, 101 Lombard Street. But I'm wrong. It's, it's another, it's another commitment that holds how you've been sitting and things of that nature, and how you haven't been sent. All right, I'm gonna look that up. Is there any particular uh, people that they should look out for? I know that there's a judge that, um, you know, what I'm saying is very important in what's going on with you. Oh, yeah, speaking of which, you heard about that. I almost forgot. Her name is the Honorable Cynthia Jones. The Honorable Cynthia Jones uh, is in a circuit court, and I had uh, wrote her with regards to the search procedure warrant. If you have it released back to me, then so that's like the beginning of my case. And, you know, you can start with a due process. And I need you that warrant so I can prove some certain things about identification and lies like that. And um, she wrote me back and basically just said that she found that I was acquitted of all my charge by the Honorable David Ross each and every count. And the Honorable David Ross, the one that sentenced me and gave me the acquittal is the deceased. So it's like the state playing games now. They know that he did, so they playing word games and stuff like that on a petition. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when the state realize that they wrong, they be trying to play around and stuff. And that's when we the people have to get involved and hold them accountable for the things that they do. You know what I mean? Uh, a call, an email... Uh -huh. Just, you know, just support matters, you know what I'm saying? So I'll be sure to uh, put down the information of everybody that we should reach out to, as well as uh, providing a link for the petition, you know, sign it and share it. You know, we the people, we got to make sure that we hold these people accountable or they're going to keep doing what they do. We already see they're not doing the right thing and they're not going to do it without us getting in their business. So let us go ahead and, you know, pull it together and make sure this happens, bro. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to address the listeners, you know, with, you know, whatever you want to say. So the floor is yours. Well, first and foremost, I greatly appreciate you, you know, and I hope that the people that hear you helping us can really show you the support that you need. But as far as me and myself, you know, I thank you all a lot, you know, for uh, helping out build this platform. And I can, I pray, I honestly pray that the support will continue because there's not many war angels on the field right now. There's not really many, many people that care enough to take their time to do something else for someone else and then build up that platform to do just that. So I'm grateful, I'm grateful, gratefully appreciative, you know, for all the uh, support that y'all gave up because without that, I wouldn't be here right now to get the help with you guys. So thank you very much. God bless you. For sure. Um, how can the people reach you if they want to reach out to you to, you know, give you support or anything like that? Well, I'll say nowadays, you know, the things are different. We have tablets now, so they can look, look my name up. Uh, they can look my name up on uh, gettingout.com, and uh, they can find my information and send an email. Or, you know what I mean, 
Yeah, I think that's probably the only way that I have the most, the most direct way. Um, my ID numbers and my name and all that, it's, it's just easy to find once you type in Timothy Brockington. It should just come right up on the Jeff of Merlin. Um, you can give us there. your, um, give us your identification number. Okay, um, the ID is, uh, 168 1371 and my DOC, DOC number is 342 193.